Ariel and Flounder Shoe Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a tutorial for another shoe painting that I did that is some Ariel shoes. There's Ariel on one and there's Flounder on the other and then there's little charms going around them like there's some shells and some sea stars and I think a seahorse and all different kinds of cute little charms that I sewed around the backs of the shoes. I hope you guys love these as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to start with Miss Ariel and with some black paint I'm going to begin sketching her basically on my shoe. So these are canvas shoes and if you aren't, um, if you're feeling like you might want to do some better sketching than just going straight to paint, which definitely can happen, you make, you can actually just use a pencil on these shoes and that would work perfectly fine. Um, it wouldn't necessarily erase very well but it wouldn't be nearly as dark and hard to cover up as the black paint. So if you wanted to do that, that would be perfectly acceptable. I would use a softer pencil, so maybe like like a 4, a 4B would probably probably do the trick. Okay, so I'm doing, I did the outlines for her face, added her hair, do her shoulders, and I finished off right at the tip of the shoe, or the point of the shoe, or the toe of the shoe. Toe, that's the word. Yeah, the toe of the shoe with her shells, but obviously however big you start painting her will depict how far down you can or how much of area you get on there. Add the outlines for her eyes and her smile. The more outlines you add now, the more you know what you're doing and can fill stuff in later. But then I'm going to take some light peach color and I'm going to fill in her skin. So I'm just going to take and go through all of that. The great thing with working on canvas shoes instead of a canvas painting is that I guess it's a benefit and it's a downfall depending on what you're doing and what your techniques are. But for me, I think it's a benefit because the paint stays wet way longer than on a canvas because it soaks into the shoe and the material holds onto it and prevents it from evaporating quite as quickly. And it makes it so that you can blend in shadows and highlights and like a little pink in her cheeks so easily. So I took some brown and I shadowed just around her face and like on her neck, add some white highlights on her chest and down her nose, add a little bit of pink like I said in her cheeks and all of that color just blends in so smoothly. It's amazing, it goes so nice. Um, the reason that is is because canvas shoes aren't primed. There's no gesso. There's no primer of any sort on them. So the paint just kind of is the primer and it gets sucked in there. Then I'm going to be adding some darker purple first over the shells for her shirt. And then I'm going to take some white and add some highlights on there. Like you, like you saw, highlighting it was a breeze. Same thing with like a, like a faux suede shoe because I've painted some of those as well. The paint just paints on there so nicely and it makes it so you can really add some very simple blending and if you're somebody that doesn't that likes to draw cartoons but hasn't done too much for any highlighting blending any really depth perception this might be a really good way for you to start because it is so easy instead of trying to go straight to a canvas maybe something like painting shoes that's a little i don't know a little more low-key but has some benefits to it might be a good a good way to go add some white highlights in our hair not too much because if you had too much for white highlights it's going to turn pink so for the most part what i did for highlights on her hair is i actually did low lights so i have some burgundy paint and i have red i'm going to be using those two for the most part back and forth to add the highlights in her hair but do just a little bit with white to brighten up a few sections that you selected but like i said don't do too much with it because it's going to turn kind of a mauvey pink color and that's not really what you want then i filled in her eyes with white and then add some teal for her pupils or for her irises i mean add some white in her teeth pink on her lips add some little bit of burgundy on the lips too just to shade those in and i know that i missed painting the rest of her eyes i apologize you're going to add eyelashes like i said teal for her iris and add her pupil and her eyebrows with the burgundy color and then go back through with your black paint and redo your outlines the first time you did your outlines it's probably going to end up looking sketchy with your brush even like a pencil would because it's going to kind of skip over the texture of the canvas shoe but the next time you do your outlines on the end with all the painting done it's going to be so smooth because the paint is smoothing over it it's going to make it so much easier to do for the other shoe i'm going to be doing mr flounder so there is the same process going through starting out with the outlines and then after i have all the outlines done with him i'm going to begin filling him in just like i did with ariel 
with flounder if you wanted to I kind of tried to keep him proportionately the right size to Ariel but it means there was less painting on this shoe because in general he is a smaller character if you wanted to keep it so that there was about the same amount, amount of painting on the flounder shoe versus the Ariel shoe you could either make flounder bigger and just make him a little bit and not worry about the proportions or you could add some other stuff in the background like maybe a couple sea stars or some seaweed I personally liked that he was just sort of floating there in the middle of this polka dotted shoe and I was like cool I love it so it's personal preference whatever you like I just thought I'd put that out there as an option for flounder I'm going to begin filling in all of his facial features well not his facial features not his eyes and his mouth but all of his background scales with yellow really nice bright yellow and then with him I did some highlights with some white but I just continued filling in like I said the paint stays wet for much longer I would say you've got instead of on a canvas where you have to basically be working at a pretty good clip to get all of your blending done before the paint dries on these shoes you can take it a little bit a little bit more slowly you probably have five ten minutes until it's too dry to work with which doesn't sound like much time but if you're used to doing acrylic painting on canvas where you do have to just work really really fast that five ten minutes feels like a lifetime so then I'm going to fill in his darker stripes with a really nice medium dark blue and then I highlighted those with just a smidge of white I didn't want to overdo it like I said these are his darker stripes so you don't want to over highlight them but a little bit of highlighting really does go a long way then for the lighter section of blue I'm actually using the same blue and white combo but I'm changing up my recipe a little bit so where the darker stripes were 90% blue 10% white the lighter ones are probably 50 50 since blue is so much more pigmented than white or not necessarily more pigmented but it's the color is more powerful just like how if you're mixing black and white if you want like a 50% gray it's not too much black mixed into that white same thing with your blue and white combo here it's a lot more white to blue than you may think so just keep that in mind add that so the cool thing with these shoes is I found them and they already had the polka dots and I thought that was just so perfect as soon as I saw them, like oh my goodness I need to put Ariel on these shoes the polka dots reminded me of little ocean bubbles and just the way the light blue was I thought it was perfect if you can't find shoes like this obviously um, it probably won't happen just the way life goes um, it would look really good you could just add some polka dots in the background or maybe add some bubbles to give it that effect you wouldn't have to polka dot the whole shoe but maybe just add a couple little white dots here and there just to give it some of that bubble appearance I think that would really look nice same thing going over flounder I put white in his eyes then some green red in his mouth dark red and then go through and redo all of those outlines just like so really crisp it up adding those black outlines sometimes I, when I'm doing outlines I'm like oh this is so tedious and sometimes it's very calming to me I think it's all whatever is in your mind but if you get kind of on a good clip with doing the outlines it is very relaxing it's kind of like little meditation you just keep adding the lines keep going so there add his the outlines around his eyes little bits of eyelashes a tiny amount add his eyebrows like that then go around I did outline his blue stripes but that would be one place where if you didn't want to you probably wouldn't have to worry about outlining the blue stripes on his back it's personal preference there go through add a little red tongue inside the dark burgundy mouth add some white highlights in his eyes then I'm gonna go through and with a pencil like I said you can write on these shoes with a pencil I'm going to mark every inch around the back of the shoe so I'm gonna make seven little spots and on each of those little spots I'm going to take some light blue thread and some cute little aquatic charms and I'm going to be sewing charms around the back of the shoe I absolutely love how this turned out those little charms I think really made the shoe and it added so much detail to them so I had some seahorse charms some shell charms just different ones sea star charms and I just thought that was so cute adding those around there then I'm going to relace the shoes so that they go the laces go straight across and then on the second one from the bottom I added a fish charm on my area shoe and I added a mermaid charm on my flounder shoe just to kind of really add the charms if you want to I might add a little bit of some fabric protection in the back of the shoe to prevent rubbing from where you sewed the charms on in the back on your heel just you know something that may or may not affect you but it would be an option just you could even get some felt and put some felt in the back of the shoe to add a bit of padding other than that these are all done I absolutely love how they turned out I hope you guys like them as much as I do and please check out my Facebook and Instagram pages for more art I love painting shoes and I'm sure there'll be more in the future so don't forget to click subscribe and I'll see you in my next video as well